Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another virtual painting session. So this time we're going to be using the Cobra brand water mixable oil paints once again, just because I noticed that I had a lot of uh, questions about different materials and um, uh, the word water mixable oil paint was brought into the discussion last time. So I thought might as well, since we're doing um, Alla Prima, uh, for a little while now. Uh, Cobra is actually pretty good uh, for Alla Prima, I must say. So I do have the colors listed in the description box down below. And I also have, um, actually, correction, I have a uh, Cobra paint set uh, from Amazon listed in the description box down below with an affiliate link if you would like to purchase it. it I think it contains about 10 colors. Um, yeah, 10 of the Cobra colors. So we're going to be painting a wolf, so wildlife painting. It's going to be a lot of fun today. So I'm going to get started in the same technique. Um, the only difference is I don't have an, any extra medium. If you're noticing here, the, um, the paint is actually a little bit oily. So um, that being said, I really won't need any extra oil for Alla Prima when it comes to Cobra. And I say, and I'll say that uh, Cobra is actually really good for Alla Prima. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So please feel free to ask me anything. Hey, hey Brooke, uh, how are you doing? Hello there, M. Uh, are water soluble oil paints easier to clean? Uh, uh, with the brushes. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, so before I even get started, let me just prove that it's it's water mixable. So this is water. I wouldn't stick my hand inside of turpentine. I just, you know, I wouldn't. So this is clearly water. So you just get the burnt umber, which is what I have there. And there you go. Clean. Um, so yes, it is very easy to clean. Uh, really, the only downside with Cobra, and I'm going to be using Burnt Upper to draw. Um, the only downside with Cobra, so what is Cobra? Uh, Cobra is a water mixable uh, oil paint. So you can clean it with water and thin it with water. Um, so I'll talk a lot about that and, and co contrast it to the uh, traditional, uh, more traditional oil paints in a little bit. Hey, Steven. Um, yep, no problem, Em. Um, so I'm working on a, on a white panel. This is an 11 by 14 inch panel. This actually has a painting behind it. So a painting that I didn't quite like is behind it. So I just sewed the back side of it so that I could paint over the panel again. So it's just a, uh, a simple panel and I'm gonna use simple straight lines and angles. Um, the paint is relatively thin and I want to get the composition down first in the abstract just like I would in any other painting. And the thing about the wolf here is that I really like the rim lighting. By the way, the photo reference has uh, been borrowed from Unsplash. I have a link to the photo reference in this post and I also have a link to the um, to the uh, photo reference posted in the community section of the uh, YouTube channel. So I'm starting off with very basic, simple straight lines and angles, just not trying to get anything too precise, but just basic shape, something that I can move around. And we're gonna jump into masses uh, actually really fast with this technique. So let's see if I have missed anything. Hey, Brian Ross, I hope that everyone's liking these uh, streams. And thanks to everyone that's left a like. We already have five likes. That's pretty cool. Hey, Mohammed. Um, hey, Milka, is that a brand or just what you call it? It, it is a brand, uh, actually. Uh, Cobra, Cobra Talons uh, oil paint. So Cobra Talons is the brand. This is water mixable, water cleanable. And if you want to go with the water cleanable solution, water cleanable oil paints, then... Uh, Cobra is what I would suggest and a lot of my students use Cobra just about the only downside with Cobra is that it takes a long time to dry but all water mixable oil paints that I've tried um, I've tried the Holbein I've tried the um, I've tried the Winsor Newton version um, so all of the ones that I've tried take 
quite a long time to dry so that's not really that big of a downside but it's something to be mentioned and yes cobra is the name of the uh of the paint so let's see here oh yeah hey mina yeah no no still life this time we're painting a wolf a wildlife scene hopefully this will be uh interesting and fun for everyone Feel free to draw and paint along with me. And uh, this this wolf, we want to. I'm gonna want to get really artsy uh, with with this one. We're definitely gonna explore the power of Alaprima. And it starts off very very abstract. Some would say hopeless, um, but the way that I start is the same with every single one of my paintings, even a classical one I start as abstract and simple as possible because the abstraction is what really helps to uh, get a gauge of on, in your composition so I'd say that the wolf I want to be somewhat in the middle uh, the head to be a little bit higher so pretty much where I have everything placed I just have a little bit too much width here for the wolf so I'm glad you find this interesting. Hey, Pavlo. Hey, Robocop 2015. Yeah, these, um, so yeah, I'll be talking a lot about uh, water mixable oil paints during this stream since, you know, that's what I'll be using. And for the most part, it is really, really, I mean, I really enjoy the coloration of these colors. I actually haven't memorized the paint tubes, but this is, uh, I'll try to list them out to you. This is just titanium white. Uh, the yellow, give me a second here, the yellow is called primary yellow. Uh, this one is yellow ochre. This is cadmium orange. This is pyrrole red. Um, this is matter lake. So this is their version of alizarin crimson. Burnt umber, ultramarine blue, ivory black. And this one is, what is that one? It's a violet color. It's over here. It is. It's just called violet. Again, all of the same. All from the same brand, Cobra. And for Ala Prima, you really don't need um, a medium with Cobra. It doesn't have that kind of gooey texture or feeling that you get from the Winsor Newton. Uh, for those of you that have tried water mixable and don't like that goo like gooeyness. This has closer to the uh, melted butter feeling. This is closer to Winsor Newton feeling of oil paints, just it uh, cleans with water, thins with water. All right, so now I'm, I've pretty much got enough of a sketch. Now I'm ready to jump right into the uh, the colors. Hey, uh, Brooke, uh, crimson color or Matter Lake? It is called Matter Lake. Um, this one right here. I think I have a large one actually. Yeah, the large one from the thumbnail. Um, this is called Matter Lake. It is their version of Alizarin Crimson. At least from what I've found, I haven't seen anything that they call Alizarin Crimson, uh, the Cobra brand. But it works very similar to Cobra. But I will say that combining the their Matter Lake and Ultramarine Blue doesn't really get a, a nice violet, which is why I have violet here on the, the palette. Not that I really need violet that much, but it's just nice to have it. And I will say that Cobra is a very prismatic uh, set of colors, the uh, Cobra Talons. It's, and it's extremely creamy, as you're seeing here. I'm not using any, any medium at all, just the paint itself. And now I'm just going to go in with masses. So this is how I like to work in the Alla Prima style. We want to go value per value. Hey, Scott, what's up? Uh, thanks for stopping by and saying hi. Hey, Mareed. Oh, yeah, no problem. I'm glad you like the, uh, the um, high quality image. Let's see here. So Burek says, I think... Uh, PR264 is the best alternative to Genuine Alizarin Crimson, which is PR83. I, I like that comment. Let's definitely, everyone take a look at this comment right here. This is something definitely to look at. Um, and uh, if I can read, if I can read the pigment. Um, 264. Hey, buddy, this is actually 264. Um, so Matter Lake, thank you for pointing that out. Again, let me see if I can 
So PR264, best alternative to genuine alizarin crimson. Matter Lake from Cobra is PR264. So that's I'm glad you pointed that out. And before anyone is uh, wonders, I am not sponsored by Cobra or any brand, really. So uh, please don't think that this is some kind of promotion for Cobra. Because it isn't. And I'll tell you the bad side of Cobra as well. Um, and again, like I was saying before, the biggest con to Cobra is the same for all water mixables really is that it takes forever to dry. And that's just that's just part of it. Um, it's not the best. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone that wants to paint on the same painting for more than three days. You can work on a painting for about two days and a half with Cobra without it drying too much on you and work a la prima. So a la prima means wet on wet. But any more than three days and you're going to want to give your painting about two weeks to dry thoroughly. Um, you might get lucky and the paint will dry in about maybe, I don't know, nine days. But um, Cobra, again, it, it takes its time. It takes its sweet time to dry. Uh, which isn't always a con. It's just something different that we have to learn to use. That's all. Mind you, it's a lot cheaper than um, than uh, Old Holland. It's a lot cheaper than Williamsburg. It's a lot cheaper. It's it's pretty much. Uh, I think it's even cheaper than Winsor Newton colors, especially if you get this one, Pyrol Red. So let's see here. Hey, Cynthia. Oh, no, you're not late at all. We're just getting started. Oh, I'm glad that you love you love dogs. Hey, Steven. Oh, you're going to get uh, get yourself the Egbert brush. Yep, we're using my favorite brush, the Egbert brush. Hey, Damien. Oh, I'm glad that my videos are... Um, uh, you find them amazing and helpful. Daniel de Garcia, what's up? So this one right here, um, uh, uh, excuse me, Pyrol Red. Um, it's kind of like a cadmium red substitute, but it's cheap as can be. Um, it's a really cheap red, it, and it's this one right here. It has pretty good pigmentation, but it, it's not really at the level of a true cadmium red, like cadmium red light. Um, but you wouldn't really notice it unless you are painting something like a stoplight or something. You you wouldn't really notice the differences. So let me go ahead and start to cover a little bit more for this for the wolf. And I'm going to use a little bit of a complementary color actually. I threw in some of the violet. Just because I don't want this to get overly um overly saturated. I better remember to turn off my phone before somebody calls me. Phone is off. Okay. So, I'm going to be going in with the most obvious things possible. A little bit of ivory black, burnt umber. Yep, these are big paint tubes. And, um, yep, it was, uh, I usually just try to find the sale. Yeah, usually just I go right for the sales. <laughs> now I'm actually going to go ahead with the same brush and fill the background. And a, a positive to Cobra is that it's super easy to clean. Um, so you can get away with reusing the same brush for multiple things. So Cobra uh, is just super easy to clean. I'm leaving a little bit of the the rim lighting here. And another thing I like about this photo reference, one thing I like about this photo reference is the rim lighting. So I really want to get the uh, rim lighting effect here relatively quickly. Hey Milka, um, do I like working with them? I do, I do like working with them. Um, not too long ago I did like this really big, um, landscape painting like kind of uh ala prima abstract ish landscape painting 
using Cobra. So I like Cobra for this purpose, for very thick, um, expressive alla prima painting, but not so much for uh, classical painting, not, not as much. Let's see here, Steven. So I, I like pyrrole reds and oranges, pretty opaque colors. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use it now, uh, just a tiny bit to get kind of a pinkish hue. Uh, yeah, pyrrole red is definitely a really good color to use. I think it's more intended to be a substitute for cadmium red. Let's see here. Hey, Burke. Um, let's see if I can point here. Hey, Alma. Hola, como estas? Um, yep, pyrroles are really good substitutes for cadmium colors, and I pr actually prefer them over cadmiums. A bit less opaque, but much more saturated, and they are non-toxic. So there we go. Thank you for that comment. So yeah, I mean... Uh, definitely pyrrole red is a good color to use and it's much cheaper. I mean, it's, it's just much cheaper <laughs> I think we're gonna be talking a lot about priceless today um, Definitely much cheaper So now let me get the larger brush back out. Let's see here Milka. How long can you leave brushes before they are solid uh, can they reconstitute like water color? Mm, it depends. If you're using Cobra, you can probably leave your paintbrush. Now, I wouldn't advise doing this, but you can probably leave your paintbrush out for like three weeks. I'm not even kidding. Cobra is that slow drying. You can probably leave your paint, uh, your brush for like three weeks and maybe use some Gamsol and it'll probably just come right off. Um, I wouldn't advise that, but uh, when it comes to traditional oil paints, uh, you can leave your brushes at the most overnight. I wouldn't do more than that uh, because then your, your brushes will get uh, just too difficult to work with. Now, I wanted to work on a... Um, just a gessoed surface, so just a white gesso so that I can utilize the brightest lights possible. I'm gonna experiment a little. I'm gonna use water, just a little bit of uh, the water and paper towel to see if I can subtract, and I can. Like, it works like a charm, okay. So if that's the case, then I'm just gonna continue. I'm gonna thin out the paint a lot more with the just the water, no extra medium required. And I want the background, uh, the trees, to be a little bit uh, cooler that's too green, so I'm gonna go with, let's throw in some kind of ultramarine blue, violet, titanium white, uh, something cooler. It's kind of warm in the photo reference, but you know, atmospheric perspective. So let's see, what have, have I missed anything here? I mean, uh, which is better, using a knife or the brush to mix colors? It depends on what you're after. If you're after, if you're more of a, I guess impressionistic painter that wants a pure color uh, than a palette knife. But if you're more of a value-based painter, so if you're more of a realist value-based painter, then and again, just take this is all with take this all with a grain of salt. I mean, different artists work differently, um, but I prefer to use brushes for value-based painting, which is what I pretty much always do, um, and. If I'm doing a very dedicated color study, um, then I'll use palette knife for sure. It, it all depends what you're after. And you know, since winter's coming uh, in the, the US, well, not that soon, but since winter is kind of showing up, maybe this will be more appropriate too. So now I'm gonna use again the same old brush and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Hey, Walter Mock, what's up? Hey, Anthena. 
Hello to you. What's up, Don Doe? Hey, Barack, is it possible to overmix your colors? I don't think so. I mean, as long as, you know, the, the secret is, their secret is there shouldn't be any secrets. But um, in reality, it's really about how you relate colors to one another. Try to see colors in relations and not so much as an individual recipe for something. Um, so I'm more or less comparing the value of the trees up here with this value. See how it's almost mimicking the picture almost perfectly? Um, and I'm just comparing. Um, so I tend to say that there's no such thing as an ugly color, and I still believe that. There's no such thing as a ugly color. It's just that maybe some colors aren't related properly in terms of hue, value, and chroma. So let's see here. Hey, Carmo23. Um, what do you think about leaving the brushes in a glass of water overnight? I think the oil, or sorry, I, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, the oil can't dry. Okay, sorry, I just had a brain fart there. Um, I wouldn't, to be honest, I, I wouldn't leave the brush in the water overnight. Um, it's just my personal opinion. I mean, you're, you, you'd have to try that one on, on your own, but... For me personally, um, especially with this brush, uh, I, I'm very careful with um, some of my brushes, not all of them, but I, I wouldn't really advise leaving it in the water. Just because perhaps the glue itself, I'm, I'm theorizing, I conjecture that the glue inside of the bristles here would probably have some kind of damage from long-term exposure to water. I I think that would be a reason, but again, it's conjecture. And see how I'm using the background color to draw We're going to get this nice shadow. And again, if you like what you're seeing here and you and you would like to take your online education with me further, uh, please check out my online classes. At, and they're only $10 a month. But let's get a little more into this bright blue. I will say that ultramarine blue... Um, Hey, Donda, the wood can swell to... Oh, yeah, the wood. Yeah, perhaps, yeah, the wood on the brush. Uh, unless you're using something like... Uh, I, I believe this has a... This is like plastic here, and this one is wood. So it, it just... I just... Yeah, I wouldn't leave the uh, the paint in the, uh, in the water. So someone mentioned palette knife and... And uh, palette knife versus brush for mixing... Here's an instance where I want a really bright blue. So I'm going to go for a pure color mixture. So if I want to go for a pure color mixture, I will use palette knife. And I'll just paint it directly on here. And then what I'll do is I'll get a... Actually, you know, I think I'll just get the same brush because this is too blue. I just want something that's blue-ish down here but see this right here would be way too blue if i left it alone so i'm gonna mix it in with this maybe we, maybe we can do like a palette knife only or palette knife asmr type stream one of these days but i just wanted a tad bit more bluish here but not bright blue Now what I'm going to do is just get a ton of the, um, actually what, you, what I'm going to do is clean this brush first. And just using water, just water. Remember, the only con really to the Cobra, in my opinion, is its slow drying nature. But that can also be seen as a, a, as a positive for Alla Prima, which is what we're using it for here. 
Let's see here. Hey, Athena. Let's see here. Do you have a specific brush with you uh, you like the most to paint with? Oh, yeah. Yeah, buddy. This one right here. This is my favorite brush. Um, this is Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle. I thought it was a 12, but this is a size 6. Um, Egbert. This still has the writing. Um, I like these brushes so much that I have a second one. I just... Um, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I have a second one of these, and this is my favorite brush. I also have this brush listed. I'm trying to find my brush. I also have this brush listed in the um, the description box down below, and I think I also wrote a side note on it saying that it is my favorite brush. And how about this philosophy? Uh, you know, treat every day like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. Let's let's be positive minded today. Um, and there's something so I don't know so captivating about a blank surface that we you know the blank surface that we started out with today. It I don't know. Do you feel that way whenever you have a a blank canvas to work on? It's like uh, it's like a, a th ethereal type of tra transcendent thing. What in the world, Siri? I am. No, Siri, I am not talking to you, Siri. You're so rude. Okay. So rude. All right, in any case, it's just, it's nice to have a blank canvas. And I don't know, that, that's my philosophy. Treat every day like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. And now I'm just going to quickly fill the bottom. And we'll get to the wolf at some point. Uh, you know, what kind of inspired me to do the uh, uh, paint this wolf is um, my neighbors have this really uh, beautiful um, husky. I think it's a husky or, or I don't know. Some, maybe it's a Malamute. Uh, I, I have no clue. But wolf-looking dog. And I thought, you know, since everyone has been asking for wildlife, that might be a good idea. Cool, now we have the bottom filled, almost. And again, this is as non-toxic as it gets with oil paints. I mean, I can literally just use my hands to, to blur. And I'm not, there's like no problem with this at all. Maybe there is, but I don't think there is much of a problem with it. Hey, Cynthia. A canine. Yep, this is a uh, canine. Yep, this is a wild wolf. Um, no, no, this isn't my neighbor's dog. I, I'm not this good of a photographer. Um, this is taken from um, Unsplash. I didn't take this photograph myself. This is a uh, copyright-free uh, photograph, uh, photo reference that uh, everyone can use as well. Um, Unsplash, again, is a really good resource for artists and creators again i'm not sponsored um you know i'm not saying this because someone's paying me to say this it's just it's it's true uh, unsplash along with pexels um p-e-x-e-l-s they're really good sources to find um resources to to use as photo references but yes this is a wolf hey andre what's up Greetings from Brazil. Thanks for watching from Brazil. Let me go ahead and get a little more titanium white. Uh, and if you're going to buy Cobra water water mixables, or if you have Cobra, feel free to let me know. Or if you use water mixables yourself, let me know. Let us know. So a little more titanium white. Um, you know, you can really feel the contrast, the difference, though. I mean, this, this is my uh, Williamsburg Flake White. That's like almost half, almost halfway done. This one is pretty much full. And this Williamsburg Flake White weighs still more than this. Um, so, you know, it, it's not as uh, dense of 
pigmentation with Cobra than, uh, say, you know, Williamsburg. But you wouldn't even notice it. I mean, in the end, you wouldn't even notice it, to be honest. What you want to do is know the characteristics of your materials and use them to the, you know, uh, take advantage of them, of the characteristics. So now I'm going in with cadmium, orange, titanium, white. Let's see here. Hey, Brooke, I'm reading your mind today. That's the third in a, in a row. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking about pixels. Oh, I'm glad that you um, you use Unsplash as well. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for typing that out. So, um, everyone watching this as a pre-recorded video, uh, check out the name right there, Unsplash. And also down here, Pexels. So, these are really good sources for um, copyright free. And copyright free is very important, especially for content creators. You don't want to get flagged for using a picture that you're not allowed to use, um, especially with original artworks. You know, you, you can easily sell a painting that you uh, create, even if it looks uh, very similar to uh, a copyright free photo reference. And remember, I'm not really going to aim to copy the photo reference either. You interpret visual information and you make art out of it. So I'm throwing in a little bit more of that cadmium orange towards the edges here and I'm drawing very simply uh, a contour for what the edges of the trees would look like. And whenever I do landscape, um, contrary to what a lot of um, artists will do, I actually like to work on a white surface, um, just the gesso. And again, I use Liquitex Professional Acrylic Gesso. Sometimes I'll work on a tone, but for landscape, I usually like to work on the white just so I have the full value range at my disposal, like right away. And also, when you're working on light, your darks look really dark, which is what you want for um, landscape in particular. So this is kind of a combination of landscape and, uh, and doggy or um, wolf. Let's see here. Hey, Charles Ward. Hey, Yupari. Can you update the Amazon link for the brush set that uh, brush set you use? It just takes me to the Amazon homepage. What? Let me check that out really quickly. Unfortunately, I don't know if I can update that while I'm painting. Huh. That's weird. I checked it. It should. It should. Oh, if it's sending you to the homepage, that must be. I don't know. Does somebody want to check the Amazon links for me, for Cobra? If not, um, if it isn't working right away, uh, Charles, after the stream ends, I'll go and uh, double check the link. But I don't know how that will mess with my internet. Um, Hey Doris, what mediums do I like to use? When I'm using water mixable, uh, when I'm using Cobra, I actually don't use a medium. I just use what's in the paint uh, because Cobra is already pretty uh, oily on its own. So I don't really use a medium. I I do own Cobra's quick drying medium, um, but what I found is that their quick drying medium, all it does is just thin the paint which is nice, it thins the paint, but it, it doesn't really do much um, to expedite the drying process again. Cobra does take a long, a long time to dry. Um, so, which is why it's uh, pretty good to use for what we're doing today, which is Alla Prima. Um, let's see here, I think I missed a comment. Let me go back, let me go back. Hey, um, Ilse Marie Brie, uh, do you ever use clear gesso? 
I think once in my life I've used clear gesso, but I always tend to use the uh, the white gesso, just so I have um, I don't know. It's just just habit, I guess. Um, hey, dark clown, uh, fifteen sixty. If I use my fingers to blend cadmium or lead-based paint, could it be harmful to my skin? Um, uh, I don't think it would be that harmful, but unless you have like a uh, open cuts on your hands or your fingers or something, but I would just avoid um, blending with lead. That there's no lead here, um, so again, this is just titanium, so I can easily just you know finger paint this and blend it together, and I would be fine. I mean, I don't even have a cadmium in here. So it's as safe as it can possibly get when it comes to oil paint. And it handles just like traditional oil paints, except that it's just, you know, water cleanable and takes an eternity to dry. But other than that, I mean, look at this. No problem at all. Now, I wouldn't do this and then bite right into a Hot Pocket or something, but, um, you know, it, it's... It's not anything to be worried about. It's not a cause of concern with um, Cobra. Hey, Tanya. Well, thanks for watching from the UK. Uh, yeah, we can do a cat. Um, a cat portrait as well. Yeah, no problem. We can do that. I'm glad that you like the, um, the wildlife topic. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Alexander. Do you paint every day? Uh, I wish. I mean... <laughs> I kind of do. Uh, when when I'm not streaming, I do work on studio paintings or I'm teaching my online classes, which involves me painting. So, yeah, I kind of do paint every day except for Sundays. Sundays I dedicate to my uh, family and my, uh, my fiancé. So pretty much any day but Sunday. Oh, by the way, I should mention this. Um, there is a chance that I may not be able to do Saturday this time, so I may end up doing Friday. Um, simply because Repticon, this big reptile convention, um, is finally back in Baltimore. In case anyone wants to meet me, if you want to meet me and you live near Baltimore, uh, I will be at the Repticon uh, Reptile Convention Expo in uh, Timonium, Maryland, so Baltimore area. But I'll, I'll let you know. Let's see here. Oh, what did I miss? What did I miss? Um, hey, Barack. He said brush sets, and I just checked that he is right. Link on the bottom of the description box is directing to the main page of Amazon instead of the brush set. That isn't crazy. I used my um, Amazon watch. Do you think I can do this while I'm painting? I don't know. I'm going to see if I can double check that that link. That is just wild. Huh. That's that's wild. So um yeah, I don't know. Like here's the link. You you can see my phone kind of I click onto the link and it takes me here to the uh to the paint tube. So I don't know. I think that's a glitch when it comes to um I think that's an Amazon glitch because I clicked on it. You just saw me click on it and it sent me to that. But I'll I'll double check that when the stream is up. Again, I'm I'm a one person team, so I don't I don't really have anyone to, you know, update that for me. So now I'm going to start to put in this lighter value for the ear. So, um, yeah, then scratch that. It's, it's not in the description box yet. Uh, so it will be edited. The description box will be edited once the stream is up. 
apologize for that. I have no clue why that happened. Let's see here. Um, hey, Alexander, will I uh, ever be in Texas? Maybe, maybe. Um, as uh, some may know, I am a uh, animal fanatic. Uh, I enjoy arachnids, so t uh, tarantulas. I do think that the Arizona blondes are in Texas, so I may be out there searching for tarantulas someday. So if you ever see this weirdo walking around the desert or something looking for tarantulas, that's probably me. Hey, Brick. Uh, at least not as dangerous as metal pigments are. Uh, what did I miss here? Cobalt, cadmium, lead, a.k.a. heavy metal elements. These are pigments that you should be really careful with. Yeah, yeah. Should be careful with. I mean, I wouldn't, f like, finger paint like this. Uh, with my uh, traditional oil paints, I, I wouldn't. Oh, thanks. Um, so there we go. There is a link to the brush set. Awesome. Now I'm going to go ahead and cover. How about we do a thinning test? So I'm going to thin out the paint a little bit with just water. And so you can see with just water and look at that it thins just like odorless mineral spirits or terps would thin out traditional oil paints so of course I need to make this a little darker so now that you know it is possible to thin with water I'm just using water. And I'm going to leave the uh, the white of the panel here to, uh, again, to help me with the values. I definitely don't want to be overly slow and timid with this. Because with Cobra, you can actually move really fast. Because it's so, like, uh, slick. Let's see you're here. What did I miss? Hey, Steven. Uh, oh wait, Dark Clown, bro, life, life's a risk, carnal. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, we're throwing in some lingo. By the way, that's that's just means buddy, uh, like like friend, like com like compadre. Hey Steven, paint a tarantula. Um, let's see. I can one of these days I'll bring one of the tarantulas here. Uh, maybe for Halloween we can paint one of the the tarantulas for Halloween. But I, I do know that um, arachnophobia is like one of the, the biggest uh, phobias out there. So I have to be very careful. I don't want anyone to stop following me just because, you know, there's a spider on their screen. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I got to be careful with that. So let's put a little indication here for the nose. And I'm going to put a little bit more than I think I need. And perhaps a little bit darker as I am going to paint into it. Remember with Alla Prima, in contrast to traditional uh, painting, it's actually easier to layer lighter than it is to layer darker with Alla Prima. Not the, it's not the same with uh, traditional. Don't worry, we'll get to the specifics. What I'm doing here is just setting up the big masses. So we'll make this realistic, don't worry. The realism will come. We need the abstraction first. Let's 
probably looking more like a fox right now, but we'll we'll get there. Let's see. Um, what have I missed? What have I missed? Okay, so we're just talking about paint pigments. Hey, Andre. I'm glad you've enjoyed the still life videos. Yeah, don't worry. There'll be more. There'll be more. Again, this is just um, because I there were suggestions for wildlife. <laughs> hey, uh, Pa FT, uh, can oil paint be used to fix a squeaky door hinge? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no clue. Hey, Brian Ross. Yeah, I don't know if oil paint can be used for that. Hey, Steven. Oh, you had a red knee tarantula? Siri, I'm not talking to you. You're so rude. My goodness. Okay. So rude. Um, in any case, um, wow, you did have a red knee. Really? Uh, um, what, what is that one called? Um, it's now called uh, Brachypelma hamori. That's what it's called now. Hey, Ilse Marie, is it possible to use the water mixable oil medium with normal oil paints? It is, but I, I don't, uh, to be completely honest, I don't think I would. Uh, I would just use the water mixable mediums with the water mixable paints. Um, you know, water mixable oil paints are relatively new. Um, just like acrylic is relatively new, right? So we don't really know... Um, 100% even if we do all these vacuum tests and everything we don't know 100% how these colors will hold uh, how they will stand the test of time so um, you know if it, it depends on your preference but I just I would use traditional oil mediums like linseed or walnut oil with uh, traditional oil paints And again, Cobra, the brand that I'm using here, is a really good brand on its own. Like, you don't really have to add much to it. A little bit more gray. Now give me a second here. I'm going to look at the comments in a second. I just need the cover. I need to work a little more quickly because I do know that uh, in general uh, things are not as forgiving with uh, wildlife portraits as it is with still life. Still life is probably the most forgiving so I better make something look like something relatively soon or I'm in some trouble. Uh, let's see here. Uh, have I missed any questions? Hey, Barack. Uh, yes, but you have to use oils or solvents only after you mix these two. Uh, cannot use water to dilute thin down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would just keep them separate, the traditionals and the water mixable. I would just uh, keep them separate. That's just my opinion. Hey, Dark Clown. Yeah, yeah, don't eat the uh, the paint and you'll be fine. Hey, Charles Ward. Um, there should be a link to the... In the description box, I should have an older link that should still work um, to brushes, to a brush set. I think it's just the Cobra colors that we were having trouble with. Um, but yeah, it's, it's mainly the, um, the Cobra link that wasn't working. All right, so now let's go ahead and put some realism. We'll do some realism here. Hey, Maggie. Yeah, I apologize if, uh, if I keep missing stuff. Uh, 
And thanks for everyone that's, uh, especially my moderator that's controlling the stream. A shout out to you, Don Doe. This is definitely a group effort. Hey, Renee. Uh, why is this my favorite brush? Because um, it can pile on a lot of paint really quickly. It lasts forever. And uh, pretty much just I prefer brushes that last a lot that are not so darn expensive. But in particular, um, the reason I really like this one is for uh, the fact that it lasts so long. Um, and it, you know, makes a pretty decent uh, calligraphic mark. Hey, Renee. Hello, Maggie. What's up, Dark Clown? You accidentally ate titanium white once. I wonder how that happened. <laughs> Maybe you should be okay. Now I'm starting to put in the rim lighting. Hey Jorge, hello there from Argentina, gracias por tu uh, comment, I'm glad that you're watching, you're particip participating in the stream from all the way in Argentina, again I'm just over here in uh, Maryland. Hey Charles, uh, are you painting, uh, planning on having any, any Halloween inspired still life painting sessions? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have been thinking about it. Hey Dark Clown. Oh, huh. Spooky pumpkins. I, I, I actually did already um, uh, locate some pumpkins that I want to paint and some gourds. Now I'm starting to subdivide kind of a orangey brown down here. Let's see here. Hey Dark Clown. Uh oh. Wonder what I must have missed something here. Yeah, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. I'm kind of a slow reader right now. <laughs> I apologize. Let's see. So I'm going to take a step back. I do think I have to raise the, um, the little placement for the eye. So this is why I usually say, um, you know, keep things simple and easy. Because when the time comes to make changes, changes are simple and easy to manage. So I'm going to move this up here. So what have I missed? Hey, Shadow Star. I'm glad that you find this uh, exciting. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read quickly, everyone. Uh, hey, hey uh, Poffit, the values are good. I'm glad that uh, you find that the values are good. Awesome, thank you. All uh, right, what have I missed? How's the aluminum preparations going? Um, if I could reach all the way across the room, I, I have my panels, aluminum panels that I'm uh, preparing. 
I will say I'm not that impressed with the quality of the um, the aluminum panels, but I can't really know for sure until I try them. Uh, so they're not quite ready yet, but they're getting there. Hey, Sky, does anyone have any tips on how to lighten colors? If I add titanium white, it tends to dull them. Um, that's where I would go with more of a flake white. Um, you have to be very careful with titanium white. It's not... Uh, it, it tends to take color. It's very opaque. Um, well, that's not the reason why it's difficult, but it's just uh, titanium white is difficult because it raises the values really quickly if you use too much of it. So you really have to use very little, tiny amounts of it. Thanks, Don, though. Yeah, we'll do a Halloween special for sure. Hey, Barack, um Aluminum composite panels for painting on? Yeah. Um, if anyone has heard of Alumin, Alumina Corp, I think it's it's called. Um, it, it's like the pretty much the only aluminum panel that you can purchase on Jerry's Artorama. I'm also doing a miniature painting on uh, copper, on a copper panel as well. Just experimenting with the surfaces. Yep. Yep, Brooke. Yeah, definitely. Um, when I get the aluminum panels, although I will most likely do, uh, classical style paintings on the aluminum but I don't know I, I nothing's really set in stone yet I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you all know and right now I'm just going for the most obvious stuff in this stage anything that comes to mind immediately I will put down Hey, Ilz, uh, how do you prime the copper? I just painted directly onto it with titanium white. Um, I should have purchased a uh, oil primer, which gives it more tooth, but I just went directly onto it with um, my fast matte titanium white. That's what I used. And it's got a couple layers on it now, so it works It works pretty decently. But it did take more than, more than two layers for the um, copper to, to sink in. And this is just a wooden panel, if anyone's wondering. Hey Amanda, how long have you been painting for? I've been painting since 2009 um, in the, you know, like representational style painting. But you know, what I want to do with, well, what I am doing with these virtual painting sessions is I'm kind of breaking away a little bit from traditional painting. And uh, I'm trying to create something new with these streams. You know, every day is like a blank canvas filled with endless possibilities. And each stream, I want to have a blank canvas. I In, in theory, which is why, I, you know, it's going to be difficult to do things like portraiture in this style. Let's see. What have I missed? Hey, Brooke. Uh, it's way different than traditional surfaces. Shiny, smooth, and a bit slippery uh, to paint on. Yep. I'll probably, if if everyone is that curious, I'll just bring the the surface. I can get up and bring the surface uh, to you. I'll bring a unprimed and then the one that I'm currently priming. Let's see, Steven. I saw an aluminum landscape mountain painting in an exhibition a couple weeks ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. On an old handsaw. Well, that's a great idea, Maggie. So I'm going to bring the panels for everyone because it seems like this is a very interesting, uh, you know, very, uh, this is what everyone seems to be interested in. So don't mind my quarantine hair if you see the back of my head.
Don't mind me, I'm just sitting back here. All right, so Berica. Are you using any mediums with water mixable oils? No, 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 just using the Cobra oil paints. Um, for Ala Prima, you actually don't need too many mediums, but I, I wanted to show everyone what the aluminum panels look like. This is what the aluminum panels look like. Um, I tell you what, this probably isn't the best uh, advertising for these panels because look at these scratches. Uh, so I'm not that impressed with the build quality of these aluminum panels. Um, I ordered 9x12s. So, um, you know, if you go to Jerry's Artorama and you order the aluminum panels, they will look like this. Hopefully you'll get them in better shape. These came kind of beat up. So this is the aluminum. I'm trying to open the aluminum here for you. So you can see. See how it uh, kind of is a little glossy. It's a little rough on the edges and it's not straight aluminum either. The sides are kind of like some kind of cardboard feeling to them. Um, so this is what it looks like again, unprimed. And you can actually, they say you can paint right on it. It's brushed aluminum. Um, I ordered about five of them. So here's one that I'm preparing currently with oil paint. So I'm oil priming this one. Um, so this is just layers and layers of titanium white. I think I'm on the third. I want to put about like four of the titanium white, but this is the problem. Uh, again, don't, um, you know, don't think that Jerry's is a bad company or anything, but th the shipment that I got had a bunch of scratches on it um, on one side, but luckily I was able to salvage by, you know, priming the other side with oil paint, but uh, that's just uh, to show everyone, it seems to be uh, something that everyone's curious about right now, the aluminum panels, and they're not quite ready yet. Any idea? Animal portraits are easier than people portraits, agree? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. Um, it depends, really. Animal portraits can be very difficult, especially if you're painting like a cheetah or something, uh, or an iguana, or something really detailed. It can be kind of difficult. Hey, Barika. Yeah, it would be nice to take advantage of the shiny surface, and I think I will. I will leave one of them unprimed and just paint right onto it. And now what I'm going to do is take advantage of the ease of uh, cleaning and actually erase with paper towel, a little bit of water. So a little bit of water and paper towel. And it subtracts so easy. I want to subtract a little bit there. I know that looks looks kind of weird right now. But what I did was subtracted so that I can add um, a really bright blue. All kinds of different painting techniques going on right now. Now let's add the dark for the pupil. And again, you really don't need any medium with Cobra for Ala Prima. There is a way to expedite the drying process with Cobra. And I actually want to talk about it with the manufacturers and see if they can do something about that. Because again, th these paints would be exceptional for for everyone to use um, if you know you ha you can't use uh, traditional oil paints or you want to travel and you can't travel with like turpentine and stuff um, I want to talk to the manufacturers if they would listen to me um, and in integrate a, an alkyd a type of alkyd um, alkyd resin or something in their paint to expedite the drying time but of course that's down to the chemistry and stuff Let's see, what have I missed? I think I've missed a lot here. Hey, Troy. Um, yeah, wildlife and animal portraits are a little bit more forgiving, I'd say. Hey, Brick, so you thin down titanium white with 
paint uh, paint with solvent, apply it to the surface, and leave it, and wait for it to dry. Yep, I, that's what I do. Ideally, you would want to use uh, a dedicated oil primer because the primers add more tooth. But yeah, you can prime it like that. And of course, this I have to adjust the value here for the for the eye. Now, if I'm not careful, this the drawing can go haywire like really quickly. So I have to be a little cautious here. So let's see, um, hey Steven, that's what the artist did, they left some aluminum showing uh, so you can view it from different angles. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean that would be cool because of the shine of the aluminum. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, hey Barak, uh, I do use sandpaper in between the gessoing um, when I use acrylic gesso, not so much with the uh, oil primer. Now I really want to push the light. So I'm going to have to go even more contrasty. In hindsight, I should have made that darker from the get-go. But now we can put some of the uh the fur fur-like texture in the Alla Prima style. Let's see, what have I missed? Uh, Brock, do you uh, use... Oh, wait, I already read that, sorry. It's paint not right. What's up? Hey, Andre. Have you heard about gambling fast, Matt? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, it dries extremely fast. Um, i tell you what, though. I kind of prefer Winsor's version of the Alkyd oil paints um, because my gambling fast, Matt, Titanium white in particular dried way too fast, whereas uh, Winsor Newton's Griffin Alkyd kind of dries at just the right uh, rate for a fast dryer, meaning um, overnight. Gambling fast mat would dry within hours. But I was using Gambling fast mat a lot, actually, not too long ago. Um, you know, when the uh, shutdown started happening, the shutdowns in February and March. Let's see, what have I missed here? Hey Scott, I paint with water mixable oil paints and um, white spirits all the time. Well, yeah, I mean, you can, you can use them. Uh, Scott uh, is, is in one of my students, and uh, Scott, you're using Cobra, right? Since, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, we talked about Cobra. So yeah, Cobra is a very versatile, um, oil paint 
to use. It's just um, again, it's the slow drying nature. Scott, how do you how do you deal with the slow drying nature of because your paintings are wonderful. I'm wondering how you deal with the slow drying uh, nature of the oil paints. Are you finishing one? It seems like you're finishing more uh, one section at a time, and, and taking advantage of the uh, the drying properties. Let's see, what have I missed? Oof, I'm trying to read as quickly as possible. Hey, hey hole, hole sink, sink. I want to start using oil paints. I'm a watercolor type of person, but oil paints are spooky to me. Spooky, spooky. Um, you know, I would suggest if you don't have any allergies or any restrictions to traditionals, to, to go with traditional oil paints and just get the... Uh, Odorless mineral spirits or the, um, I don't know what you might call it, the uh, uh, Gamsol, Spike Lavender. I would suggest that. But this is perfect for anyone that has uh, allergies or something to the materials in oil paint. This guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, thanks for answering um, the questions, everyone. I will, uh, Ilse Marie, I will return to the Van Dyke at some point. I haven't touched it yet, but, um, you know, I'm trying to keep the, uh, the pace a little faster with these virtual painting sessions. And, um, but yeah, I will return to that one at some point. Let's see here. Hey Matt K, why do you use water mixable oil paint? Good question. Uh, why am I using it right now? I'm using it right now because, uh, well, first of all, I taught myself to use water mixable oil paints a long time ago actually I started with the artisan which I don't really recommend um, by Winsor Newton and uh, just to experiment with it because it was something new but then um, you know I realized that so many people one of my students in particular when I was teaching in-person classes before the world ended uh, she had an allergy to the um, the, either the mineral spirits or the paints, I forgot. Um, so she could only really use the water mixable. And um, that that was one of the instances where I realized that people really would benefit from this information, this kind of information being out on the internet and just showing that it's possible to paint with these um, paints. So again, mostly to help others is why I'm using this. Just know, as I, I'm going to keep saying, just know that these take a long, long time to dry. And that's the biggest drawback, really, to this. Oh, thanks for the, the link there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, RX-7. Yeah, the world did end. It'll be back at some point, but the world the world needs to get its act together. Hey Scott, oh, you put the paint in direct sunlight and it cures the cobra much faster than leaving them in a room. That th that comment, I know it just kind of went away, but that comment, I wish I could highlight that comment. That's really important, Scott. So leaving it in direct sunlight. Okay, I didn't know, I didn't know. Hey, um, uh, Barika. Okay, uh, so yes, my mother is an oil painter and she develops severe allergies. So in this case, definitely 100%, I would recommend Cobra. Uh, so definitely um, just uh, tell your mom that th this is one of the best. This is better than Winsor Newton Water Mixable, better than Holbein, in my opinion, better than those two brands. Um, 
it doesn't feel gooey. Um, it doesn't have that gooey feeling that the other brands have. Um, hopefully, I don't get in trouble for saying that. But again, I'm not sponsored by anyone, so I can say whatever is whatever I want. <laughs> but in particular, um, they don't have that gooey feeling that you get. It, it has that kind of melted butter feeling that you get from traditional oil paints. And for Alla Prima, you don't need medium, but if you are going to be layering, Cobra does sell its own quick drying medium, which I found doesn't really expedite the drawing that much, but they also have um, medium specifically for these paints. Let's see here. Oh, I'm sorry, they're not wild, uh, widely available there. I apologize. Uh, another thing, if if she has an allergy to, uh, if her allergy is towards the solvent, then maybe spike lavender. So a lot of the allergies I found are with the solvents. All right, I'm gonna need a bigger brush. Time to bring out the favorite brush. A little more of a reddish tone. Yeah, yeah, Scott, I agree. So the quick drying medium from Cobra is uh, kind of like a mixture of liquid and linseed. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it doesn't really expedite the drying as much. Yeah, I didn't know that even Cobra wasn't uh, wildly available. And here I thought that Cobra was more available because it's like, marketed to be a safer alternative. Now I really want to start to put some of the fur. So I'm putting the brush strokes in the direction of where the fur would be. And I'm definitely going to go in with a darker value now. Perhaps a little bit warmer. And now maybe a little bit more neutral. I'm just experimenting with this color right now. Let's see. I think I missed some comments there. All right, so it seems like the conversation has gone uh, ahead of my uh, ability to read and paint at the same time. But this is why we have the comments here, so that you can uh, catch up to the uh, the dialogue.
Now we're going to need a little bit more of that orangey hue over here. And again, it's so uh, fluid, the paint. I really, I really don't need a medium for this. So Scott says you can use 25, uh, 75 Cobra medium and water but the mixture turns white so your paint will probably dry darker much like acrylics so if you do yeah you if you thin out the the cobra see how this is like gonna drip now if you thin it out too much um it becomes kind of like an acrylic or a watercolor i personally i don't um thin out the paint as much to to that extent with cobra but it is a possibility Now I'm going and uh, shearing up the edges. Now, of course, I have a little bit more, or actually a little bit less of the back of the uh, the fur of the wolf. So I guess my wolf is kind of a younger, younger looking wolf. So maybe I'll just go and put in some more light for the fur. Oh, oh, hey, Donna. Awesome. You bought the, uh, the, uh, color set. Yeah. Um, this is definitely like, like I'm saying to, like I'm trying to say to everyone, this brand that I'm using is the one that I highly recommend. And I think most people highly recommend this because the, when I first heard about Cobra, it was through YouTube when I, um, when I first did a water mixable video, water mixable oil painting video, using Winsor Newton. The Winsor Newton brand, the Artisan is really not the best, but you can you can get by with it, but it has that kind of gooey texture that um, is not at all like what you would expect with oil paint. Uh, this is closer to that genuine oil paint feeling. Yep, and thanks to everyone that is leaving a like. We're at 48 likes. I, wow, it's been an hour, 23 minutes. That's crazy. Um, so I should, at this point, introduce a crowd question, the one that I usually introduce first. So if this is your first time joining us in a live stream or a live painting, uh, virtual painting session, please comment down. Or, of course, if you've been here um, before, also write down... And again, thanks to everyone that's leaving a like. Oh, thank, thanks, Stephen. And also, um, feel free to comment down uh, other subject matter that you would like me to paint. Because again, wildlife was suggested before a uh, number of times, so I uh, finally got to it. All right, we got an emoji there. Awesome little uh, emoji. Isn't this fun? Like this whole setup, I really like this setup. I hope that you're enjoying the the live live stream setup as well.
Hey, Tanya. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm, I feel like I'm moving a little slow today. Uh, with painting. And thank you. Hey, Christine. I'm glad that you, uh, you love watching the stream. All right, now we're gonna walk our way towards the edge here. Hey, Brooke. Oh, I'm glad that you like the the chat um, the chat integrated into the uh, the stream. I really feel like this is the future of. Um, of my uh, my art, I do feel like this is my art. Um, combining painting and and video, you know, I always say the same thing, but combining painting and video in in such a way that others may benefit. You know, it's kind of taking uh, from motivation from from Bob Ross, co in combination with traditional painters of the past. Of course, I still have plenty to to improve with these streams, but every little uh, you know, every little uh, upgrade is is fun to do. So any suggestions then on future painting, uh, virtual painting uh, subject matter? Do you exhibit any work in the UK? Oh, I wish. I wish, Glenn. I wish I was uh, exhibiting more artwork, but at, at the moment, no. I need to be better at that, at um, submitting artworks to competitions and things. It's just kind of hard to find the time to do so. I really want to get the texture of the fur, so I'm going to start to take wild guesses here with our wildlife painting at getting the fur Ala Monet with these uh free brush strokes. Hey Steven, buildings, cars, abstract, street scenes, etc. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Cars would be nice, uh, and buildings, yeah. Hey Brooke, you actually enjoy wildlife paintings very much and would love to see more of these. Sure, yeah. Hey Pierce, see something spooky? Okay, yeah, we can <laughs> we can paint something spooky. Again, I can bring a a, a guest tarantula one of these days. <laughs> that that should be pretty spooky. For our, our Halloween themed stuff. Let's see. Well, nice username, uh, Cupcake Angel, three six five. Well, yeah, welcome to the stream. I'm glad you're here with us. Hey, Charles, anatomical hands, skulls, eyes. Okay, so more technical um, demo stuff. Yeah, we can look into that too. Ocean or a lake? Cupcake Angel 365, yeah. 
It's a good idea too. Hey Carmen. Oh, thanks. Yeah, spooky idea. Definitely. Um, now, now you're getting in, into the direction that I want these uh, these videos to go. And now, um, you know, comparing this to this, I just want it to be very clear that I'm not trying to replicate that with this. Uh, this, I want this to be a painting, and I want that to be a photograph. And I, I don't want to, I don't want to spend all this time trying to perfectly copy or replicate. Rather, I want to interpret visual information and create a painting. But I do see that uh, it's a little bit warm and it's a little bit um, too light overall. So I'm going to start to throw in the ultramarine blue. Hey, Steven, uh, a uh, erupting volcano at the Milky Way. Yeah, I'm sure I can find that on uns Unsplash. Yeah. Yep, Cupcake Angel. Yep, definitely. I, I agree. Oscar Domingo. Okay, Cityscapes. I'm getting a lot of requests for Cityscapes, so uh, definitely. Cityscapes, Erupting Volcanoes. I love it. I really like these ideas. Keep the ideas coming. Please keep commenting. Uh, I definitely want to, I want everyone to participate. And if you haven't uh, liked the stream, please like the stream. If, of course, you like the stream. And don't forget, if you want to take your learning with me further, to check out the online classes. Again, new lessons uploaded. Uh, three times a week. Uh, we have a virtual classroom each week. Students can submit images weekly of their class projects. And the online classes are only $10 a month. In case anyone is interested. Let's see. Uh, what have I missed? Hey, Jackie. Oh, thank you for your wonderful comment. Um, I think I, I missed a few comments here. Thank you for sending the comments. Hey, Charles. Do you ever paint anything not using uh, photo reference like a, a sci-fi scene? Mm, uh, I used to in the past, but I haven't. Uh, hey, Ronald Miller. I missed your comment a little while ago. Um, uh, thanks for the, the uh, thumbs up. I'm glad that you enjoy watching the uh, the painting and yeah, ocean and sky painting. So we're getting a lot of ocean, sky, landscape. Oh, I love this. Uh, hey, Susanna, uh, a gothic portrait for Halloween. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, we can do like a whole set of different paintings for Halloween theme. Hey, hey, Ariel. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Barika, paint whatever you enjoy the most. I'm glad that you enjoy these streams. Hey, Juan. Thank you. Um, so really what I enjoy doing is creating content for everyone. It, what I enjoy is creating something new. You know, like for me, for me, this is something new. Uh, because how many painters, how many times can I paint something that looks really realistic that looks just like Sargent painted it or just like Buro painted it. Um, of course, I can never get to their levels, but how many times can I, you know, redo the same thing that has already been done time and time again in history? What I want to do with art is create something that's never been done before and in a way that can help others in the future and in the present. 
and to me that is the painting uh, video the painting uh, you know combining video and painting A haunted house, Bob? Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Let's see, Glenn. I find it difficult uh, holding the brush without resting my hand and keeping uh, tight control. Um, as you're seeing here, I, I usually try to hold the brush all the way from back here. The more you actively tell yourself to do so, the more it will become uh, routine. So the more you train yourself to hold the brush from all the way uh, back, the more routine it will become. Hey, Tanya. Oh, um, you're interested in joining the class. Uh, what do I teach in the online class? Um, I particularly want to study classical portraits. Well, you are in luck because um, we are the current projects that we're working on. Uh, let me just tell you the way that the online classes go in a, in a nutshell. The online classes are results-based classes of which you can take your own time to create the projects, to work on the projects. They're results-based and you can work at your own pace. And yes, there are classical paintings uh, and every classical painting has um, its own playlist associated to it so you can watch the videos. Um, and again, please check out the Patreon. So um, patreon.com slash artist. I'll type it out for you. And yes, there's lots of classical portrait there. Uh, lots of classical portrait in the uh, online classes. And remember, it's only $10 a month. And uh, again, we have weekly virtual classrooms, which we've actually just upgraded this week to uh, a, a really nice, uh, you know, video, uh, a really nice video upgrade to the online classroom. So there's a lot of stuff going on with the online class community, and it's really wonderful to see everyone's artwork. And um, I definitely encourage everyone that wants to take their learning further with me beyond what uh, is uh, here on YouTube. All right, some more portraits. Oh, thanks, Ronald. Hey, Tanya, I'm very into it. Okay, I just uh, answered that. I answered that. So good. I'm, I'm caught up with the comments. Hey, Evelyn. I'm glad you enjoy watching the stream. So we've gotten a lot of suggestions for cityscapes, uh, oceanscapes, ocean scenes, uh, like spooky, haunted things. And I tell you what, a lot is possible with this technique, with the Alla Prima. Even though my online classes focus on um, classical, the fundamentals are universal. So my students on Patreon, I'm 100% confident that my students that have completed already uh, one of the projects can do this. Um, I'm confident that my students can do Alla Prima, you know, after enough practice with classical and I will be introducing Alla Prima in a more rigorous format of course in my online classes this is flying like I don't paint this fast uh, for my online classes at all everything is uh, step by step now, this is our virtual painting session this is our our hangout session With the online classes, we really get down to business. We get down to the fundamentals. So I want to introduce another crowd question, and I'm going to start with my answer. What was the last thing that you painted? And mine is a wolf. I'm currently painting a wolf. Well, what was the last thing that you painted? Subject matter wise. Portrait, 
a landscape, a still life. It could be something that you're working on today. What what are you currently painting? Or what was the last thing you painted? So this is a crowd question. So I'm hoping to get 66 responses as we have 66 of us, or now 68 of us uh, here. And uh, to those of you that are enjoying the stream, please don't forget to like like my little old stream, please. Hey, Tanya, a landscape. Waltemar, a portrait. All right, Bob, come in with a puppy. Awesome. What's everyone painting? What was your recent painting? Let us know. Tell you what, after a while, you didn't even know that you're using um, water mixable oil paints. Let's see here. What have I missed? Oh, I've missed a lot. Alrighty, gotta read. Awesome, thank you for the comments. Uh, Barika self portrait. Awesome, awesome. RX7. Um, I wonder if, is your title the R? Do you have an RX7? Mazda RX-7, that's an awesome car. Almond Blossom slash Portrait of uh, Master Chef, awesome. Charles coming in with uh, Bunny Mask of Donnie Darko. Uh, Maggie Martin, uh, only a work of work in progress of two grandkids, awesome, awesome. Mohammed Ilya Repin Master Study, awesome. Glenn Dog Commission, awesome, awesome. I uh, love doing those. Susanna S., uh, Jimi Hendrix, nice. Oscar Domingo coming in with Urban Sketch Ink Watercolor. Yep. Dondo coming in with uh, third go around on the pearl earring. That's right. That's our third, our uh, project three in our online classes. Awesome, Dondo. Christine coming in with Charlie, my son's cat. Awesome. Shout out to Charlie, your son's cat. Hey, Teresa coming in with, oh, okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. We still got a lot to go with this virtual painting session. It's okay. Um, you know, the more practice, the better, and the the right teaching is is um, the the important thing. Hey, Stephen, coming in with portrait uh, underpainting of Holly Johnson, the singer. Awesome. Love it. Let's see. Hey, Francis. Oh, thank you. You know, I wonder if Bob Ross was alive today, uh, would he be using water mixable? Because it's so useful for Alla Prima, I, w I must say. I mean, these colors stay wet for days, so. It's kind of perfect for Alla Prima. Not so much for classical, but for Alla Prima. Unless, uh, you know, you've, you've got the mad skills and you can make Cobra dry faster. Let's see. Cupcakes Angel 365. Painting Study of Starry Night. Awesome. That is a very uh, iconic painting. Hey, 
Hey Charles, let's do a Halloween uh, Halloween scene. Yeah, yeah, man. We're getting a lot of uh, requests for Halloween theme, so if you're asking for it, we're gonna do it. I wonder, does anyone know if I can find some copyright free images of like Halloween style images? I guess I should probably just check um, Unsplash and Pexels, but I would definitely like to find it. Hey Teresa, you're the only English artist I know in YouTube who does step by step painting. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad that you liked the, the videos. And again, I'm even more uh, thorough or step by step with. Uh, the online classes. Again, I, I'm not usually this fast uh, for online classes. Hey, Dean Michigan, is it more expensive than regular oil paints? i tell you what, man. These Cobras are not at all as expensive as traditional. For one, you don't have to buy solvent. You just water. Um, so in that regard, they're very cost effective. Hey, Mary. Hey, Hala. Hala, Hala. Hello there from South Carolina. I'm glad that you're enjoying the stream. And again, anyone that, um, if this is your first time here in uh, one of our live streams, please let us know. We'll give you a little, nice little shout out pointer with the, uh, with the paintbrush. Using a little more of the primary yellow. Um, let me list out the colors again. Just um, how do you organize your supplies? Uh, studio tour question mark Charles. Actually, I think the title video on my YouTube channel is a something about a studio tour. But I can I can do another. Although my studio is kind of messy. Um, but if that's what you're interested, it would have to be a pre-recorded video though. Because I'd have to be moving my camera a lot, and uh, you know how that goes with camera scenes. Hey Jing, what's up? Um, first time shout out to you right here. First time shouting out with the loaded paintbrush. Thank you for joining the live stream. I hope that you will enjoy your stay here with us, and definitely uh, check out our future live streams. Usually around this time, like around, um, well, I guess it's later now, but around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, with some surprise uh, painting sessions in between once in a while. Hey, Pavlo, I wanted to ask, but this is a longer question maybe. Um, feel free to ask anything on your mind. Again, all of you, all of you attending the stream, even if you haven't commented, um, you you are what makes this stream happen. The fact that you're here with me, you could be anywhere else, but you're here with me, you're here with us, says a lot to me. And I'm very very humbled by the by this experience. Hey Oscar, can you apply these oils over acrylic? Yes, you certainly can. Um, oh, I'm glad you're enjoying the streams. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Hey Pamela. Oh wow, you're watching in uh, Alberta, Canada. Awesome. Thanks for joining the stream. I hope that you are enjoying the stream. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, Teresa, you can share this on Facebook. Yeah, you have my my permission. Um, but you don't really need my permission. If anyone wants to share these these videos or links, uh, feel free to share along. 
Let me let me make sure the bottom is filled. And since we're using water mixable, let's let's live on the wild side. <laughs> we can use our fingers to mix. Ha ha ha. Water mixable oil painting hacks. You can use your fingers. Let's see. Hey, uh, Glenn. How long would Leonardo da Vinci, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, would have had to wait between layers using the materials he had available? Uh, I can't really know because um, you know I I don't know. But I classically painters would wait about six months for a painting to be thoroughly dry before. Um, reworking classically that's how it would be from what I've read online but, you know we can't ever really know but that leads me to another interesting crowd question that I have in mind let's see D Michigan from your description earlier it seems you like water mixable oils uh, dry longer than regular oil paints what if it's heavy heavily diluted uh, that does help a little bit to expedite the drying process if it's very thin. Um, if you recall, I actually thinned out a little bit of paint with water here. And it has, see this, I can run my hands around it. But it doesn't dry completely like you would expect with, say, um, you know, thinning out with turpentine. Uh, it, it doesn't really dry the same. It, it kind of uh, has a flaky type film. Now I'm just gonna, I'm putting in some of a bluish color here to uh, adjust this edge. And you know, the more comments, the more likes, uh, the more fun <laughs> uh, these streams are. Because that tells me that you're enjoying these streams. And if you're enjoying these streams, then we're gonna definitely do more. Given technology allows us to do more, but if you're enjoying these streams, we'll do more. And I'm even looking, I'm researching into a multicam setup so you can actually see me uh, unless my uh, scary face will scare everyone away. Maybe maybe you'll see me for like a Halloween night special. Hey Cupcakes Angel 365 shout out to you with a loaded paintbrush. Welcome to the stream. Um, so yeah, we're talking about using acrylic as an underlayer. You, uh, I haven't had too many problems with it, but I guess different artists will have different, uh, interpretations. Let's see, what have I missed? Hey, D Michigan. Oh, thanks for searching already. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll look. I'll take a look. Um, I'll look on uh, Pexels and Unsplash. Hey, Pablo, I think I missed a comment up here. Let's see. Of the reference photo that is just going to look weird if I copy it. How do you develop that feeling to decide when or to change some of the shapes so it looks natural on the painting? I usually make this decision of what I'm going to alter before I start the painting. So um, usually I'll alter things in paintings. Um, I'll premeditate that. But with this one, I didn't really see too much that I wanted to to alter but usually if you know like the hair is going over the model's eye or something and I don't want that then I can edit things like that hey Ronald Miller your last was last uh, painting was a blue vase copper plate green container awesome awesome hey Brika it's almost 2 a.m. over there wow 
Well, thank you for joining the stream. I hope you enjoyed your stay. I uh, hope you will enjoy the future streams, and I um, uh, hope you have a good night. All right, let's let's get serious with the fur. I'm gonna start to put more of the fur. Oops, I got paint on myself. Oh no, Angio and Paiso. Oh, oh, thank you. I'm glad that my live stream has uh, helped you out after having a, a stressful day. Oh, and it's your first time. Wow. Shout out to you, uh, Angio and Paiso right there. Shout out to you with the proper end of the brush, the front end of the loaded brush here. Shout out to you. Uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, I hope you'll you'll join us in our future live streams, which are usually 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. I say usually because, you know, uh, tomorrow's never promised today, so usually. That being said, is anyone here from the Baltimore area, Baltimore, uh, Maryland area? And if you are, uh, it would be nice to meet uh, some of you uh, this weekend. I'm actually going to Repticon. Reptile Convention and Timonium. Hey, Pablo. Uh, for example, those dark shapes on the neck where there is some more space between the hair. You didn't paint it at all, but it looks great anyway. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I usually try to put in, uh, like right now, what you're going to see me do is edit uh, which fur to put in, which fur I don't want to put in. But th those are more like small details. Uh, Pablo, so um, I do plan on painting the the fur if we're talking about the fur. Um, you know, it's a little bit blank here, and I do want to put a little bit more for the trees up there. So yeah, for some reason I'm moving a little slow. But again, I don't want it to be... Um, a overly realistic image either. I want it to be more expressive. Hey Bert 2008469, welcome back. Uh, welcome from uh, all the way in Texas. Let's see. Oh, thank you so much for your super chat, uh, Ronald Miller. So Ronald Miller has just uh, contributed to the channel. Thank you so much. And um, if you would, if you were interested, um, here is a recently completed still life uh, painting. I can send you a high resolution image uh, as a reward for your super chat. So this is a still life painting that was completed over. Uh, several layers in the classical technique so if you don't if you would like to have a uh, so Ronald if you'd like to have an image I will uh, type in my gmail and just uh, just send me an email that you would uh, like a image So 
So Ronald, there is my Gmail. So if you uh, would like a high resolution picture of that recently completed classical still life painting, there is my Gmail right there. Just feel free to send me an, uh, an email as a reward for your super chat. Thank you so much. Yep, there's my Gmail. Unless I typoed it, I probably did. I probably typoed it. <laughs> Thanks, Tondo. So, um, crowd question, everyone. Crowd question, and I'm going to answer it first, of course. Um, if you could go back in time and watch someone paint for a day, stand over someone's shoulder for a day, and anyone really, watch them paint, who would you want to watch paint? My answer, I'm sending it right now. Did I, hey Pablo, did I ever play Dota 2? I don't think uh, I know which game that is. Yeah, sorry, I don't know the uh, that game, Pav, Pavlo. Uh, so, crowd question, everyone. So, if you can travel back in time and maybe be like in a pod, right? Uh, a clear pod where you can see the past and watch someone paint for a day, who would it be? I chose Sergeant because Sergeant, uh, John Singer Sergeant. Steven, uh, already coming in with uh, William Bouguereau, awesome. Tanya coming in with Constable, yeah, those landscapes are awesome. And Bouguereau, of course, an incredible drafts person. Maggie joining in in the sergeant, the sergeant crew, awesome. So please feel free to ask or to type any any name, even if someone has typed it before. Uh, definitely express your own opinion and your own. Um, you know, painters that you would like to see painting. I've always thought this in my head. If I could just have, have a little time travel pod or something and just spend a day with Sargent to see how he painted. Exactly how he painted. Alrighty, Dondo coming in with Picasso. Awesome, awesome. Pavlo coming in with... Doesn't matter, there is a famous player of uh, Dota 2 whose nickname is Dondo. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Glenn coming in with Da Vinci. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know that game. I tell you what game I've been playing. I play kind of like old school video games. I've been playing Spyro the Dragon recently. I don't know if anyone's played Spyro the Dragon. Van Gogh, solid answer there. D. Michigan coming with probably uh, Van Van Eyck. Secret recipes, awesome. If I could travel back in time, I'd also want to see Rembrandt. In particular, how Rembrandt would prepare his surfaces. I 
I think I would also want to watch uh, Bob Ross like live in person. That would be cool. I would also want to see how they filmed those uh, videos. I guess they must have had three different cameras. Oh, I need more. Need more of the orange. I think. I think I accidentally referred to this as cadmium orange. It's permanent orange. Whoops. Hey, Glenn, do I ever play music while I work? Um, it, sometimes, uh, but I like to listen to, like, old-school 90s hip-hop. <laughs> That's what I like to listen to. But usually when I'm painting on my own, uh, I just have Netflix on. That way I don't have to keep changing um, the music when some song ends or something. Hey, Dean Michigan. Yep, definitely. Definitely. Rembrandt. Oh, hey, Oscar. Uh, Maria Fortuny. Yeah. RX7, Dali, yeah, that would be cool. I think I missed missed one up here. I'm going to go back to my YouTube page and read it out for everyone. Uh, I agree, Sergeant, he used to attack the canvas like a sword fighter. Uh, Susanna, yeah, definitely. Ronald Miller, uh, Vermeer, yep, definitely. Hello there, Cree. Create. Do these water mixable oils feel the same as regular oils, or do they seem to have the same? Uh, do they seem to have the same quality? Uh, oh well, welcome to the stream. If this is your first time, definitely welcome to the stream. Shout out for you. Actually, I don't think the comment has loaded onto here yet, unless I just missed it. I think I just missed it. So create. Um, they do. They do feel kind of the same as. Uh, I want to say they feel closer to Gamblin or Winsor Newton traditional artist grade oil paints is what these feel like in terms of that melted butter creaminess. Uh, but they don't quite have the richness to them, um, the rich pigment feeling to them that you get with Old Holland or Williamsburg. So they're closer to that of a Winsor Newton and Gamblin Um and the quality of the pigment is really good. The color quality, I think, is pretty good. Oh, thanks, Don Dill. Yep, create your first time here. Shout out to you, create. Awesome uh, username as well. Uh -huh. Nice, nice, Pablo. All right, let's put in some more of the fur. Hey, Ronald. Oh, thank you for that wonderful comment. Uh, Portrait Works reminds of Vermeer. Thank you. That is a very, very, uh, very uh, humbling comment. Thank you.
So now I'm moving into, um, if this were a classical painting, I'd be moving into what I would um, refer to in my online classes as building up. So building up is the upper middle stages, uh, middle to upper middle stages uh, in a painting where you're building up to a finish. And again, this is way more accelerated than um, than it would be in my online classes. But uh, what it means is that now it, I have looked for as much of the obvious stuff as possible. Now it's going to start to get way more complex. Let's see, what did I miss? Hey, Bert, 2008 before 69. I've been doing watercolor this week and oh, well, thank you. Thanks for watching the videos. All right, ready for another crowd question, everyone? So if an art genie could grant you any wish that is art related. So if an art genie could grant you any wish, I'm purposefully being vague here to uh, encourage creativity. If an art genie could grant you any wish, what would your wish be? And it begins with me. My wish would be to study with Rembrandt for five years. If I could do a five year apprenticeship with Rembrandt, that would be my uh, the wish that I would ask a genie. An art genie. So let's see, what would you ask the art genie? And remember, a genie is just a mythical, um, you know, it's just it's, it's, it's someone that grants you any wish. I guess there are usually three wishes, but we'll stick to one. I want to see some creativity. Or just anything. What's on your mind? What would you ask the art genie? Steven, that's right. The study with Bouguereau. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> create art genies are very hard to find this is all like uh theoretical <laughs> yeah it's a difficult question i wanted to ask more of a difficult one purposefully vague hey glenn to be a student with me well i can grant you that wish you can definitely be one of my students i would i would love to have you as one of my students Uh, definitely uh, check out my online classes. And I, I communicate pretty much daily with my uh, online students with the Patreon Messenger. Study one year with Andrew Tischer. Awesome. <laughs> Don, do I have a drink with Velasquez? Yeah create that I'd be able to see what I what needs to be done to give my paintings more life all right create getting creative um, so this is getting pretty creative I like this uh, Pamela how to paint paintings that sell for Rembrandt prices now that is a creative answer right there I wish I knew that one
I'm going to get a smaller brush and paint the individual fur. Let's see here. Um, so, Stephen, or be ambidextrous uh, so I could paint with both hands. Actually, if those of you that don't know, actually, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. I kind of am part ambidextrous. When I was in high school, I actually used uh, my left hand in algebra class. So uh, not, I'm not going to paint like a painting completely left-handed, but I can actually write with my left hand. Fun fact. I'll paint a little bit with my left hand, but let's see. What are the comments? Uh, what's up, Angela? I wish I had the possibility of doing a big, complex, beautiful painting. Well, of course you do, Angela. Don't don't doubt yourself. I know you do. Always, I always recommend going uh, more ambitious. Be as ambitious as you can possibly be, because that's how you can really learn what the what your limits are, and then how to go beyond your limits. Hey, Bert, two thousand eight, four six nine. You have uh, have us thinking with these questions, and don't want to answer. There's much to learn and do. I mean, anything that's on your mind, what would you ask the art genie? Hey, Steven, the show of smiles. <laughs> Oh, Oscar, good answer. Learn composition with Velasquez and color theory with Soroya. Soroya was excellent uh, with his uh, daylight inspired paintings. Let's see. Uh, the, uh, let's see here, DJMS Ron would like to learn how to paint like Leroy Newman. Awesome. I like these comments. Let's see, Bert2008469 would want to watch so many artists study and just paint with any, any, uh, medium. Awesome. Pablo, there's a YouTube video where a person learns writing with their left hand in 30 days. Oh, wow. Yeah, that that's uh, it's a little complex. Um, so actually, when I was a kid, I, I did use my left hand. I remember a specific instance where there wasn't a scissors. I was doing like a craft project. And they didn't have scissors for the left hand, so I switched. It's like my earliest, one of my earliest early art memories. Hey, Glenn, um, would be interesting to meet J.S. Lowry. Awesome. Cupcakes Angel 365, studying with Van Gogh. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, you know, the Van, Van Gogh and uh, Gauguin kind of had their own, uh, I guess, like posse, I think, back then. Or they were like their own posse. The art genie is getting everyone to think, huh?
Now I want to paint the art genie. <laughs> I wonder what the art genie would look like. All right, create. When I was in high school, I used to practice writing backwards because I heard Da Vinci did that. Oh, really? I don't. I don't think I could do that one. Hey, Susanna. Oh yeah, yeah. It would have been nice if Van Gogh could have lived to see how much he's respected and revered. Hey, DJ M M S Ron. Have a beer and paint and talk with Norman Rockwell. Yeah, buddy, that's that would be fun. Now, yeah, we're getting creative here. Hang out with Picasso? Yeah, that's a good one to see. I just missed that comment. Bert, 2008 before 69. Yep, hang out with Picasso. Hello there, inventor. If I ever start painting, I wouldn't mix on the fly as I do, but prepare all the combination possibilities of colors in 1,000 bottles. I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's one way to look at it, in inventor. Uh, welcome to the live stream, if you are new to the live stream. Ronald Miller, to be able to sculpt like Michelangelo. Awesome. Hey, create. Did you start off with a tone canvas here? Oh no, don't don't worry. Um, we still got a lot left. Uh, no, I actually started on a on a white surface, which in fact there's still some of it here that I may have to cover soon. Let's see here, Pablo. I would ask for a new style that I was never that was never seen before in terms of having a whole different a uh, whole different world than any other and then use my imagination to re represent it with painting. Now that is creative. Yes, I've actually thought of something similar to that too in the past. What it would be like, yeah, that's awesome. What it would be like to uh you know, be like a classical or just like a representational painter in a world that we're not familiar with and what those paintings would look like, you know. Imagine uh, uh, aliens in distant uh, galaxies, you know, what, if they did painting, representational painting, what would their paintings look like? What would their subject matter be like? Yeah, that's a good one. The art genie has inspired a lot of creativity in us all. Remember the question, the crowd question is, um, if an art genie could grant you any art-related wish, what would it be? Mine was to study with Rembrandt for five years. And we have a lot more creative answers here. Hey, uh, Nani Stretch. Unfortunately, uh, your mic is not very clear. It, it isn't? Uh-oh. That's not good. Now I have to check my microphone. Um, 
I might have been, I might have accidentally got too much paint on my microphone. Uh, I'm using a blue Yeti. It should be a really high quality microphone. It's not good. Can I, uh, hey, create, can I talk about what I would do differently to represent fur? Um, yeah, I can talk about that. Uh, I prefer round brushes for these kind of instances and letting the direction of the brush stroke mimic a group of, you know, individual strands of fur. Is anyone else having trouble hearing me today? Serious question. Is anyone else having trouble hearing me? Because I may have to check my microphone and see if I damaged it. Because I did get a lot of paint on it. Hey, Create. Oh, I'm, I'm glad it sounds good to you. Ronald Miller, it sounds good. Okay, I'm glad it sounds good. Hey, Pablo. Um, no problem. Oh, if anyone is a, a native Spanish speaker, you can also type in Spanish. I, I don't know if, if, if you are, but I can somewhat read Spanish and somewhat speak it, just not very well. Hey, Sleepy Vamp. I like your username. Welcome. Hey, Steven. Okay, I'm glad you can hear the mic. Yeah, I was kind of concerned. Thanks, Walt, Walt DeMott uh, and Chris. I was a little concerned. Um, as you can see here, I can maybe I can lift it. Maybe not. Never mind. I'm not going to mess with it. But my microphone is, like, in front of me. So I'm constantly painting the back side of it. <laughs> um, so that did concern me. I didn't know if I was damaging my microphone. Hey, Create, can I paint in Spanish? Paint in Sp You mean like... Okay, hold on. You mean talk in Spanish while I'm painting? Un poquito, pero no me sale nada claro. No, no sé tantas palabras en español. Solo poquitos. I don't know that many words in Spanish. But I do know that this is... Uh, I learned a word not too long ago about um, cast shadows. This would be a cast shadow. Sombra projectada. Someone taught me that. If you're in the st uh, live stream and you taught me how to say this in Spanish, let me know. Yeah, my my Spanish is pretty bad. Hey, Nani. Oh, yeah, no problem, create. <laughs> Hey, D, uh, DJ RMS Ron, do you ever use a rake brush or a fan brush for a really for really detailed fur? Mm. I usually use fan brushes, like you saw me earlier, um, just to bring down, to uh, you know, uh, s smoothen out the paint, like this. But no, not usually. Tell you what, now I have to get back to the trees before I forget. Let's see here. Hey Bert, two thousand eight before six nine. Hey, no, no worry, no worries. Create. Todo bien ahí. Muy bien. All right. Hey, Fernando. Sombre projectile loose the reflector. Yep. Sombre projectile equals cast shadow. Oh, Dark Clown. I think you taught me that one. Hey, RX-7. Hey, Fernando. Let me see here. I think I'm missing the ending of that comment. Yeah, 
Yeah, my Spanish is uh, not that great. <laughs> hey, Oscar. Yep, I know one art term. I know one. Sombra Proyecta. Not that I can pronounce it, but I know what the, what the word is. Now I gotta put these uh, detalles para los árboles en la distancia. So the details for the trees in the distance. Hey, Susanna. Oh, I'm glad that you like the painting. Oh, I'm glad you like it more than the than the reference. I did try to push the effect of light a little brighter on the uh, the reference. How's that for distant trees in the sunset? So now we're going to give the background a little more attention. Hey, Nami. As I came late, where can I start from the beginning? Oh, thank you. Um, so once the stream is, is over, YouTube will start to upload it as a pre-recorded video. Um, so it should be available to view the entire stream uh, whenever YouTube is done processing it. I don't want to make these brush marks identical. As you see in nature, it's not as um, repetitive. So we're at 95 likes now. Thanks, everyone. Is there any way I can get five more likes and then we can we can hit 100 likes? That would be pretty neat. If you uh, send this to 100 likes, I'll try to speak in Spanish again. You can laugh at my Spanish, my attempt at Spanish. Oh, almost there. We're at 98. So, uh, DJ R, uh, DJ M S Ron. I always bump up the saturation of the color in my painting compared to the reference photo, especially for the foreground. Uh, no, I don't usually mess with the, I just usually leave the photo references as they are, but I can see how that would help. I can see that. But for instance, you see this kind of warmish tone here. This is something that I imposed that you would see more in nature. Um, and it's not really there in the photo reference. So it's something that I've kind of added. Uh, hey, uh, pa Pamela, uh, will you plan to do this again soon? Yeah, hopefully Wednesday, uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, Mohammed. Yeah, I can do more portrait. Um, we can return to the, uh, the, the Van Dyke one of these days. Oh, thanks for the likes. Now we have reached 100, so now I must try to speak in Spanish. Oh, dear. Um, hmm. Estoy poniendo más atención en el color naranja de la, en la distancia en los árboles. Meaning, I'm putting a little bit more attention in the orange, orangey hue in the trees for the sunset. I don't really know how to say sunset in Spanish.
Thanks, Bert2008. Uh, Susanna, S. Oh, this is a Princeton Catalyst Egbert number six. One of my favorite brushes ever. Actually, it is my favorite brush. Hey, Carmen. You did not speak English, although I understand a little uh, what is written. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I love to see you paint. Thanks for your previous greeting. Yeah, of course. Y por mi poquito español. Sí, es muy poquito. No sé hablar tanto. Pamela, what's up? <laughs> no hablo español. Sí, puedo hablar un poquito. I create, uh, what is it about the brush that, oh, sunset equals, let me see, I gotta read this one, puesta de sol, sunset equals puesta de sol, ah, puesta de, puesta de sol, 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 okay, I create, what is about the brush that makes it your favorite, um, what I like about this brush that makes it my favorite is that it, uh, as you can see, I can, add a lot of paint to it. I guess it has to do with how large the bristles are. Um, and it, I can cake on a lot of paint. I can get a really smooth edge. It doesn't shovel the paint that much. And it lasts a long time. I mean, I, this brush is more than a year old. And these brushes have been abused. Someone asked me earlier about what what do I edit. Um, in particular, you see this tree on, on in the photo reference, this tree here. I'm not putting that tree there because it's kind of interrupting a little bit of the composition. So I, I'm not going to put that tree. Yep, Susanna, the uh, Princeton brushes are really good. Hey, Charles, I use Cobra and find they are very creamy. Uh, I use Cobra drying medium with the paint so that I, it can come, overcome its tendency to remain wet. Well, uh, Charles, if you find that the Cobra medium, the drying works, that's that's good. I haven't really found that the fast dryer expedites the drying process as much for me. Now let's add. Now I, I do have a second. Of, oh, I found it. It's on the floor. I'm so messy. So this one is probably a year older than this one. So it has a little bit more use. But as you can see, the wording over here, you can hopefully see there's a, the wording there, is gone on this one. That's how much I use it. Oh, yeah, no problem, Create. Uh, it's a Princeton Catalyst Polytip Bristle Egbert. I also have it listed in the description box uh i i remember writing when i typed it out i remember writing um in parentheses my favorite brush hey ronald miller Oh, thanks for sending me your email. Well, yeah, I would love to have you in the online classes. Yeah, I'd definitely love to have you in the online classes. Adding a little bit more of that sunset color into the background. Hey Hector, thanks for joining. See, now I want to learn more Spanish. Now that I, I see that, um, you know, viewers are interested in um, Spanish descriptions of the uh, paints 
in the painting process. Jeez, I, I wish I knew more Spanish. But in any case, um, you know, painting, like mathematics, I think it, art is a universal language. It's a little bit more of that yellowish. So we're covering a lot here. All uh, right, let's see, Oscar. Let's see, one for you in Spanish. Let's see, a luz fría sombra. Oh, I can't read this one. I don't know, Ca Sombra Caída? I think Sombra and Caída. I th okay, hold on here. A Luz Fría, Sombra Caída. A Luz Caída, Sombra Fría. Warm Light. Uh, wait, Cold Light, Warm Shadow. Warm Light, Cold Shadow. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a lot for me to process, but... Yeah, usually you have this Warm Light, Cool Shadow effect, which is going on here because Warm Light, Cool Shadow. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Create. Well, definitely. Um, so Create is now welcome to the live stream tier in Patreon. So not only um, do they have access to the online classes, but also to watching each of the lessons uploaded live. Um, and again, the live lessons are in the mornings, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then after the stream is, is up, uh, the video then, the pre-recorded lesson is available for all online students. That is the, uh, the $10 a month. So again, at the $20 tier at Patreon, you get to watch the lessons as they are created. But also, uh, it should be noted that the $10 tier has access to all of the pre-recorded videos. It's just that the live stream tier at $20 a month can view the lessons live it's basically like your own private live stream to be honest that's what the live stream tier is because there's only ever really at most five of us there but would love to have you there as well let's see now what i'm going to do is push the contrast along the side of the head here it can have a little more contrast of the wolf's head. Mind you, the entire wolf is in shadow. It's just that, um, you know, it's really just the rim lighting here where the true light is. And I'm using a cooler color, the uh, ultramarine blue, to push the warmer colors on the wolf. And a little bit of atmospheric perspective. You know how cooler colors tend to recede. Warmer colors push forward. And a little tip on composition. You see how the curve meets here? I usually try not to have anything meet perfectly. So I don't want this to meet perfectly on the uh, corner of that curve. Hey, Noni, please let us know when your next pet portrait will be. Well, I mean, if you really enjoy these uh, pet portraits slash wildlife paintings, we can do many more of them. This Alla Prima technique is very versatile. It can be used with pretty much anything. But this whole thing, this whole style of painting, even though it's not as realistic as classical, is something I suggest to learn after learning classical. I suggest learning classical first. Hey, DJ Miss Ron, do you prefer to paint in oils a la prima or wait to do layers? Um, that's, well, I prefer to do a la prima for the uh, purpose of creating a fun video that uh, is engaging and that people would like to watch and to create an impact really fast. That's what I like with Ella Prima. When it comes to classical, the more layered approach that you're talking about, I prefer to use, uh, for a more realistic painting, I prefer to use classical. But again, for classical, it would take so many different, um, uh, so many different episodes. So that, that's why 
I kind of stick towards this when it comes to uh, Alla Prima. Alla Prima Portrait would probably be one of the most difficult things ever. Um, hey, Jesse, what's up? Oh, no worries. We'll still be here for a little while longer. Oh, thank you. Yep, we're doing a wildlife painting. A lot of folks, um, or people, uh, a lot of us suggested to do uh, wildlife, so we're doing wildlife. So yeah, Nani, if you really like the um, wildlife, we can do way more. Wow, it still hasn't even been three hours, so we can still do quite a bit more to this uh, painting. So it looks like I can put more, I'm going to put a little bit more of the uh, contrast back here. So I'm going to keep pushing the contrast. So we're going to use the Matter Lake. Hey DJ, um, oh, what's more fun for me? Um, I don't know, that's a tough call because I really enjoy all of it. I enjoy classical and I enjoy a la prima. Um, what's more fun for me lately? Um, to be honest, I think it's the classical, the way that I'm teaching my online classes because it's more, uh, you know, of a methodical. But it's not really, I don't know, it's hard to describe. When it comes to portrait, okay, I know how to answer your question. When it comes to portrait, my favorite is classical. When it comes to anything other than portrait, or figurative painting for that matter, I prefer Alla Prima. Hopefully that answers the question a little better. It's a really good question, by the way. Hey, Nani. Oh, I'm glad that you uh, you like the uh, texture. I think I missed this comment, so I'm going to have to go to my YouTube page. Hector, for studies with no archival needs, is it possible to use gessoed cardboard instead of panels slash canvas with water mixable? I think so. Um, I've heard multiple people say that they've used um, cardboard, gessoed cardboard, and I've done it too in the past, but it, it did fall apart after like maybe like a month or so. But that was just my experience. Hey Charles, um, I gotta look up which painting that is that you're that you're writing. Hey, Steven. Oh, you like the Van Gogh? Now it's, now it's water time. <laughs> My voice is almost gone. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the uh, the Van Gogh Alla Prima a long time ago. I tell you what, portrait, Alla Prima portrait has to be the most difficult thing ever. Um simply because of the drawing aspect of it. Let's see here. Uh, Scott, so Cesar Santos paints on gessoed good quality paper, such as water watercolor paper. And he has for years, the trouble is getting the gesso down without warping the paper. Oh, thank you for pointing that out. I think uh, Cesar Santos also owns a Bouguereau painting. Another fun fact. One of my friends named Kai uh, went to this portrait face-off conference or whatever and got to hang out with uh, Cesar Santos for a while and uh, I think he he got to see the uh, art collection that uh, Cesar Santos has hey 
Hey, DJ MS Ron. Uh, I'd like you to do more wildlife. Yeah, we can do that. Oh, that's what you love to do and specialize in. Awesome. So you must do like the the really realistic ones. I've seen some really nice uh, wildlife colored pencil drawings. Man, you must uh, people must have a lot of patience for that. I prefer Alaprima Expressive. Let's see here, Maggie. So I have found paper for oil painting at Michael's. Oh, okay. Arches, I think, is a really good brand for that. Okay, I have to look at this painting, Charles. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look this one up. Thanks for the description. Oh, that sounds awesome. Surrounded by a fairy ring, cool. Pre-Raphaelite. Oh yeah, definitely love the pre-Raphaelite um, style paintings. You almost got to wonder what this wolf is up to. Um, this moment that the photographer caught is a really nice moment. No wonder if the wolf was hunting. All right, so that leads us to uh, our next crowd question. And I think you might know what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, DJ must run. Yeah, it does take a while, I imagine, with colored pencil. So now, crowd question, everyone. And those of you that have been here before know that I tend to like um, comical titles. Oh, Maggie. Yeah, Strathmore is good, too. But I don't think it's as uh, tough. I don't know. I'd have to look at it. As tough as uh, arches. So crowd question, everyone. What should we title this painting? It'll be complete soon, probably in less than an hour. Uh, let's see how long we've been here. Yep, less than an hour. Um, it'll be complete maybe in like 30 minutes. So what should we title this painting? Wolf staring into the sunset. Wolf planning out its next meal. I don't know. What are you thinking? Wolf on panel 2020. Steven, so it looks like the wolf is catching the first sunlight. Yeah, definitely. So Bert, 2008 before 6, 9, I just did wildlife in watercolor. Awesome. <laughs> nice title. Oh my God, what is he doing? <laughs> so the wolf is looking out there like, what is he doing? Yeah, I, I see that, I see that. K9 out of 10, Charles. Oh my God. That's awesome. K9 out of 10. I get it. I get it. Let's see. Hungry Doge. <laughs> Scott Trembley. Awesome. Call me an alpha. Let me see. If, let me double check. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, down to Lone Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Let's see here. I like this one though. Hungry Doge. Nami, let's get a few suggestions on a name for this. Yep, yep. Let's see what we're naming it. It's actually Canson Acrylic, but also says Acid Prime for use with oils. Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> you probably wolf experience. Yeah. The wolf experience. Hopefully I survive it. Just kidding. As we know, wolves, they don't uh, attack people.
Any titles, anyone? Comical titles? Let's see here. DJ RMS Ron Lonely Lonely Lobe. Cool, cool. Maggie Martin on the prowl. Yeah, this wolf is definitely on the prowl. He's looking for something. Hey Nami. The Wonder of Life. A very harmonious title there. Dark Clown 1560, the wolf is meditating on the creation of the universe and the origin of life. It definitely is. This wolf is meditating. It's, it's doing some theoretical physics in its head. It's got some metric tensors going on and uh, doing all kinds of uh, differential geometry in its head. I see that. Let's see. Steven's up. Hey, Lady Wolfie, you want to hang? <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Ah, uh, Charles. Oh, my God. Paint me like one of your French poodles. Oh, uh, that's a good one. Paint me like one of your French poodles. Philosopher, uh, pupper, <laughs> Pam. That's good. Philosopher, pupper. <laughs> Pam, well, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> that makes sense. As the wolf is like, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. And Don, I thought I saw a a putty cat. Oh, thanks for the the censorship there. Uh. <laughs> Oh, thank, thanks for 2008 before Is there any way I can send you a picture of my paintings for your input? Uh, yeah, that's actually part of the um, uh, online classes, actually. I um, let my students, I uh, give my students the ability to send me an image each month, uh, original artwork for um, mentorship tier constructive critiques um, in the virtual classroom. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the perks of the online classes. You have the uh, uh, option to send uh, weekly original artworks for the virtual classroom. Hey, Bernie, uh, 1,000 1, 000 yards there. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely 1,000 yards. And good eyesight. Angela, orange wolf. Yeah, because I, I did paint the wolf kind of orangey, yeah. It's the orange wolf. Wolfie, uh, that's that's good. To the point, Wolfie. I feel like the titling definitely gives the painting like a a whole new meaning. I think so. It's important to pick a uh, title uh, titles. 
Especially comical ones. My first oil painting is titled Who Moved My Bottle? That's the kind of painter I am. So crowd question, now that I think that the uh, everyone has expressed their creativity with the titles, but if you have any other titles in mind, please feel free to comment them. So another crowd question, what would you like to see painted here on Wednesday? Given my technology works and and you know, that stuff. Hey Pam. Oh, I'm glad that you like the effect of the trees in the background. I've had a lot of suggestions for landscapes, so if we get a lot of landscape suggestions, we can do one. So please, uh, crowd question, what would you like to see painted on Wednesday? Steven, volcano erupting, okay. Create something with water. All right. A volcano erupting with water. Okay, we, we can combine some images here. Let's see. All right. So Ronald Miller, wolf fur saturations, striations of cold. Wolf fur striations of cold. Okay. I got it. I get it. I think wolf fur striations of cold. So wolf fur striations of cold. Okay. I got to think for, for that one. Awesome, awesome title. Thank you. Charles, rainy cityscape. Okay, we can look into some rainy cityscapes with volcanoes erupting with water nearby. Hey, um, uh, Barry, Max. Welcome to the live stream, if this is your first time. A still life, uh, still life of dropped food. So food that has been dropped. Oh, that's a good idea. So a still life of dropped food with a erupting volcano featuring water and a rainy cityscape. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so Nami, Wednesday uh, around 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wolf 5.30 Eastern. Oh, my God. Dad. <laughs> what? Wolf 5.30 Eastern. That, that's a good one. <laughs> a wolf at 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Hey, let's see here, Pamela. Sunrise on rocky face of western mountains. Okay. Ooh, sunrise in mountains. Ooh, uh, looks like I have to do some research on uh, the images on uh, Unsplash and Pexels. I like where this is heading.
Alrighty, let me see here. So Stephen, alien invasion, then you can incorporate all the suggestions. So let me see if I can remember. So an alien invasion featuring an erupting volcano surrounded by water, surrounded by a cityscape with rain and a sunrise uh, Rocky Mountains Sunrise. Did I remember everything, I think? <laughs> that would be a pretty interesting painting. A wild painting of that. Hey, Ronald Miller, correction. Um, oh, it auto-corrected you. Okay, I was trying to figure that out. Striations of cold. Oh, okay. Wolf fur, striations of cold. Awesome. Very harmonious title there. Let's see. Uh, Barry Max, Morning Wolf. Oh, yeah. It's a good title. Barry Max, so dropped food, yeah. So, like, drop an apple or a melon or something, or a cantaloupe. Got to make sure the bottom is covered. You know how many times I've completed a painting and had things on the bottom, you know, like the easel covering? I want to make sure everything is covered here. Let's see. So Ronald Miller, the name would have uh, would have to be Apocalypse for the coming one. <laughs> yeah, an Apocalypse. Yeah, I mean, you can see an apocalypse coming. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe, maybe like a, a mayonnaise bottle? Yeah. That's a good suggestion. I love these suggestions, everyone. Let's see if we can paint all of these things in the future. And we can do that with Alla Prima. If, if you'll let me, um, you know, if you'll enjoy, if you're enjoying Alla Prima, we can paint almost anything in this style. But of course, remember, Alla Prima rests on the shoulders of classical. So anyone that wants to learn how to push their painting further, I suggest to learn classical, which is what I teach in my online classes. And, and I will be teaching how to incorporate Alla Prima soon. Gotta make sure the bottom is covered. And again, in case you were... Oh, let's see here. Let me put this down for a second. A pup... A pup calypse with lots of dogs. That's cool. That's cool. Somebody earlier wrote Doge. That's what I always call dogs. Um, shout out to all of you that call dogs Doges as well. So in case anyone's wondering, um, you can reuse panels. This is an 1114 that I've been working on. Because uh, in the back here is this one that didn't, this one went horribly. If anyone remembers this, this is an Alla Prima Rembrandt that I did a long time ago that went terribly. So I just used the backside. And there we go, like a whole new painting surface. In case you're wondering. Two for one deal in case anyone wants to buy this thing. Almost there. I think I'm going to push the um, contrast a little bit more. 
Hungry Doge. Yeah. Oh, you wrote it, though. Uh, yeah. Hungry Doge. Oh, thanks, Charles. I definitely bombed that one, though. A long time ago. Just, I would not suggest trying to do Rembrandt a la prima. That was the first and last time I ever tried that. Uh, Rembrandt a la prima. Nope. Uh, but thank you for your comment, Charles. Thank you. Hey, Ronald. Will water mixable uh, paints... Uh, let's see. Will water mixable paints work good for the Chilla Prima technique you will be teaching... Or a la Prima technique you'll be teaching. Um, honestly, Cobra, uh, water mixable oil paints... I want to say have certain advantages over traditional when it comes to Alla Prima. Alla Prima exclusively. So you may see more of this, more of the Cobra in the future. Um, because, you know, <laughs> uh, this is like, what? I don't know, $13, maybe a little bit more. This is like 40 pushing $50, um, probably even more. So... I tend to try to save these for classical, to be honest, uh, because of certain properties in flake white. But to be honest, Cobra is a wonderful paint brand to use for these purposes, for Alla Prima. It's very hard to beat it. And for the pricing as well. They're not that expensive. And a big money saver, if you're interested in that, with Cobra is this this color, uh, Pyrrol Red. It's so much cheaper than uh, Cadmium Red. And I heard that some folks actually prefer to use Pyrrol Red. And I'm going to thin the paint out with a little bit of water, just like you would with solvents. Remember that uh, thin paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. And you'll, you're seeing that here. Now I'm going to use the fan brush to minimize that. Uh, hey, Barry Max, do I worry about the toxicity of some colors? Not really. In the past, I used to, but not really. As long as I don't put my hand in... Uh, okay, so this is Williamsburg Flake White. It's lead-based white. It's a really solid color, but I wouldn't do this with it um, because of the fact that it has, has lead in it. But with this... With Cobra Titanium, I'm not worried at all with the toxicity. Um, so uh, create. So does it dry much faster? So Cobra, uh, no, no. Cobra, that's one of the things that makes it really useful for Alla Prima specifically is that it takes its sweet time to dry. Cobra takes a long time to dry. So I'm just kind of suggesting some of the the hairs on the top. But I'm, I'm going to kind of minimize that until it's barely noticeable. I don't want to accidentally paint a, uh, a wolf unicorn, so I'm going to have to adjust that. It's a little better. Yep, so again, I want to make that point really clear. This is really good for Alla Prima technique, but not so much for classical in that it takes its sweet time to dry. And with classical, you usually want it to be touch dry overnight. Or at least in a matter of a couple of days. Impasto time.
And it's weird because they market this to dry. They say that this dries fast, but it, it doesn't. I don't find that it does. Hey, Barry, Max. Oh, thank you. He looks a little surprised. Oh, <laughs> well, I guess. I mean, that adds to uh, some character. <laughs> And I'm starting to rework the eye a little bit. Hey, Nami. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy this painting. Oh, yeah. Enjoy your dinner. Thanks for joining us in the live stream. Hope you enjoyed your stay here in the virtual painting session. Oh, that's the wrong color right there. So let's see. So for next time, we have suggestions for a erupting volcano amidst a body of water surrounded by cityscape filled with uh, rain, rainy cityscape surrounded by a sunset in the Himalaya mountains along with dropped food. Awesome suggestions. Let's see. Hey, hey uh, Monsieur Murthy. Uh, Murthy. Hello there. If this is your first time in the live streams, uh, welcoming shout out to you. Hey, Barry Max. I use Cobra as a base to color the canvas. Took nine days to dry. Yeah. Actually, I found that exact same number. It did take me nine days for um, one of my paintings to dry using Cobra. Definitely not fast drying, but wonderful for Ala Prima. And I did create a classical video with this. Um, oh, hey, Create. Um, I did create a classical video using, or a classical painting video using um, Cobra a long time ago. And um, I painted that straight through. I didn't let it dry. Um, but on the third day, it started to be a little hard to work with. You can work with Cobra for three days straight. Um, I think one time what I did was I used like an acrylic underpainting. I don't know if anyone remembers that video. And uh, one of the biggest pros to the Cobra is it takes no time to clean the brushes. But it takes forever for the paint to dry. Fancy that. Let's see. Hey, Barry Max, how do you keep dust from sticking to the painting with that long of a drying time? That's a really good question. I usually don't struggle that much with dust uh, with my um, uh, with paintings that are that young. It's usually paintings that are like sitting for months that get dust. And then I just clean it off with uh, just a uh, really l soft synthetic brush. So we are at 109 likes. If anybody wants to give us the extra like to send us to 110. Hey, uh, Olivares uh, Vasquez, what's up? 
Oh, gracias. Si se parece a tu perro, tienes como un perro tipo husky. Mis vecinos tienen un perro que se parece casi igual a este perro. Y, um, ¿cómo se dice? Uh, that gave me the idea to paint this. <laughs> Alrighty, let me let me see, let me see. Um, so I'm adding a little bit more detail to the eye. Very cautiously. Oh, well thanks to um everyone that's sending a like. We are now at a hundred twelve. I think at 113 now. Thank you. All right, almost there, almost there. So this is the time where I usually stand back and check. Hey, create. Um, so the live, so create, um, you mean the live stream for the online classes? That is Wednesday, uh, Wednesday morning. Unless, am I getting my days mixed up? Hold on here. Oh, no, no. It's uh, Saturday. I'm lost. Today is Wednesday. Uh, so it's Saturday morning, 9 a.m. for the online class, the next online class. Um, yeah, I was lost. I thought that it was Monday for some reason. Um, and the next live painting demo will be, um, or the, le the next live stream painting session will be uh, Saturday, 5 p.m., unless... Uh, so everyone that's watching that wants to continue watching the live streams this week. There is a reptile convention going on Saturday. So I may do a uh, live stream on Friday. Um, so, you know, just, just look at the uh, community section. No worries, create. No worries, create. I'm uh, I'm also, the schedule is kind of tentative. Uh, yep, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. But um, check the check the uh, community section because I may be going to a reptile expo on Saturday, so that means I would do a stream on Friday instead. I'll let you know in the community section of this uh, YouTube channel. Hey Barry Max, I have all the materials I need to paint, yet I can't uh, get myself to start. Uh, how do you motivate yourself? For me, it's very difficult to figure out what to paint. Um, that's my trouble figuring out what to paint. Um, but to be motivated to paint, um, you know, I think the best thing to do is to get a canvas or a panel or something and then get all your paints out, tone it. So sometimes when you're toning or preparing a surface that actually can motivate you, I don't know, it's kind of like muscle memory. It can motivate you to figure out, um, when you're toning a surface, like, oh, I kind of see a turtle here or something like maybe I'll paint the turtle scene with a pond or something. Um, that actually helps me when I want to be motivated to paint to actually prepare my canvases or my panels. So that's that's what helps me. Hey, Mohammed. Oh, no worries. I got confused. I, I was a little bit lost with the days. I guess I'm tired. Um... So most likely Saturday, but again, this weekend is a reptile convention, and you know I'm an animal person, so I may stream on Friday, but just, ch just check the uh, community section. So don't worry, we'll do many more lives. Many, 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 many. Probably even more than the pre-recorded videos. So I think that we're about there with this painting. So I'm going to sign it. And uh, any last questions? And again, please check the community section because there is a chance I'll probably be streaming on Friday so that I can make it to the reptile convention. This time I'm going to sign it over here. So please feel free to ask me anything while I'm signing. Hey 
Hey, Barry Max. Um, thanks for taking the time to answer all these questions. Painting came out amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, I, I'm very thankful to everyone here because all, all of you are what makes this, these virtual painting sessions so awesome. And as long as you keep tuning in, we'll keep creating these. To sign, I have to use a little water to thin it out, but now it is a signed, completed, painting ready to photograph and to let dry and then get some art prints out of it and hopefully sell the art prints and maybe someday someone will want to buy the actual painting. Hey Create, are we able to sell the painting even though the reference photo was done by someone else? Yep, we can. That's actually written in the, um, the description, uh, the legality of the copyright free images. Yep, you can. It is perfectly legal. Thanks, Don Doe. Thanks for tuning in, Stephen. Thank you, Bert2008 before 69. And again, shout out to everyone that is tuning into the uh, virtual painting sessions. You are making these virtual painting sessions awesome every time. And again, thanks for all the likes, everyone. I'll just hang out for a little bit longer. I'll wait for any last questions. Yep, thank you, Dondo. And thank you, uh, Cupcake Angel 365 uh, Hope to see you here in a future live stream. So again, please, everyone that isn't subscribed, um, if you don't mind subscribing to the YouTube channel because that that's how you get notifications, I believe. Um, I'm not entirely sure how the process works, but I think that's how they they send you notifications to um, when exactly I'm live or painting live. Yeah, thank you, Mike Draw Paint. Thanks for tuning in, Hector. All right, thanks everyone. That being said, I hope that these virtual painting sessions are helping you out. I hope that you enjoy. Hold on, we got one one more comment here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Barry Max, uh, I definitely have time for your question. You said that you use mostly cheap brushes. Is that the same for blending brushes? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, definitely. Michael's 40% off, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. I don't use very expensive brushes. I invest more in the paints. Well, thank you, uh, Maggie, again for tuning in. Alrighty, so I think we are all good to go. So that being said, um, if you enjoyed your stay here and you would like to learn, take your learning even further, please check out my online classes. I really hope that these virtual painting sessions are helping you out. Thank you all so much for tuning in, leaving a like, 
commenting, uh, you know, and you're really making these virtual painting sessions uh, amazing. So thank you all so much. I wish you the very best in all of your artwork, and I will see you on the next one.